The rogue agent. Hey everyone, it's Be Righteous from Identity, and I'm so glad you clicked on this video because this build is so good, you do not want to pass it up. With the release of the brand new exotic revolver, the Regulus, this build is nothing shy of greatness. Are you a subscriber yet? If not, I'd appreciate it if you please drop a like and don't hesitate to subscribe if you're new. I drop dedicated Division 2 content, and I'd love to have you here. With all the different ways that you can cause bleed on this build, you'll see why it's called Bloodlust, a name that totally represents this playstyle. With every aspect working in unison with each other, you cannot go wrong. Just like my Ravenous build, this too is reliable enough to tackle all content. But I want you to pay close attention because this one has a lot of moving parts to it. Let's get into it. What is going on everybody? I'm glad you clicked on this video. I made this build long before the Regulus pistol came out because I made it in preparation for this exotic. And usually when I make a new build with a new weapon or something like that, and I'm about to go in conflict or the DZ, PVP in general, I'm a little bit nervous sometimes about how it's gonna perform. But when I went into conflict, when I went into the DZ with both of these builds, they performed so well. Massive did a great job with these exotics. I feel like none of these exotics need to be nerfed or buffed. They need to stay exactly where they are. I made a community post a couple weeks ago about whether or not I should make another bleed build, right? Because there are so many out there and bleed has been nerfed. And the poll was overwhelmingly yes. It was like 90 to 1. Obviously, you guys wanted it. And I want to tell you a little bit about the journey I've taken with this gear set ongoing directive way back. When this set first came out, it did not know what it wanted to be. I mean, I vaguely remember what it did. It had something that just collected your resources from 30 or 40 meters. And then at the same time, it was like a skill build gear set. I don't know. It just didn't know what it wanted to be along with hardwired. But when they first made that change, they made this a DPS gear set, which made me very interested in it. And from that point on out, I've made three builds with the ongoing directive set. First, back in 1.6, I made Predator's Mark 2.0 because I wanted to remake the Predator's Mark from Division 1. That one was very good. With how back in the day you were able to have so many talents on all the pieces of your gear allowed me to add things to it that made it really strong. So whenever I was in PvP, I was melting people. And then it changed again. With that change, I made Hemorrhage, which was like a skill DPS. It relied more on the Bleed Hive, more on the skill damage. Then I made Predator's Mark 3.0, which is to date my highest viewed video. And this one, this one was a little bit different. It was like a DPS status effect. The status effects were so high that as a DPS, my hive was hitting really hard. I really liked all of those builds and they all worked in PVP, which is very hard to do in this game where there's always a meta. And if you want to go against the grain and do a build that's not meta, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. But out of all those builds that I made, this 
is by far the best one. With the amalgamation of this new exotic Regulus pistol, along with this gear set, makes this build the best out of all the ongoing directive builds I've made. And there's a reason why it's called Bloodlust. So let's get into this right now. The specialization I'm going with is the Survivalist. Survivalist is just the all around great specialization. It has really good CC grenades, the fire grenades, where you can't get anywhere else. It helps your team out by giving them 10% damage to enemies that have a status effect. And the armor kit is really good because it can help your team as well if they're in the vicinity. Also, when you get kills on an enemy that have a status effect, it gives you crossbow ammo. And in this build, along with the other builds I made, those are the only kills you're going to be getting. So you're always going to have crossbow ammo readily available. And the crossbow is really great for breaking those armor plates on those heavies. And guess what? It also causes the enemy to bleed. So there are so many ways that you can cause an enemy to bleed. So the primary weapon I'm using is this CTAR 21. As you can see, this is God rolled. And honestly, I might change this to damage the targets out of cover. Let me know what you think I should do. I haven't decided yet. Of course, the talent is Sadist. And this gives you 20% weapon damage to bleeding enemies. And after four kills, it applies the bleed to the next enemy you hit. The secondary I'm using is the Carnage. This is the named LMG with perfect Sadist that gives you 25% weapon damage. After three kills with this, instead of four, because it's the perfect talent, it will make the next enemy that you hit bleed. And here's another weapon where the skin is out cold. I mean, I'm not really a fan of a lot of the skins in this game, but this one is on point. You can get this on the rewards track from the TU-10 update. I forgot what level though. Of course, we're going to be using the Regulus pistol. You get this after you complete the raid, after you donate all your foundry pieces and donate all of your future initiative pieces. And then you have to donate random high-end pieces. Once you do that, it's going to give you the quest for the Regulus pistol. Then you have to do the raid from the beginning. Again, each boss will drop an exotic component. Then you can go back and craft this. Simple as that. I knew this weapon was going to be good, but this exceeded my expectations, really. I was focused on the Ravenous so much that I wasn't really paying attention to this. But once I got it, I'm like, yeah, this is the one. The talent is called Regicide. Headshot kills create a 5 meter explosion, dealing 400% weapon damage and applying bleed to all enemies hit. Alright, this works differently in PvE than it does in PvP. In PvE, when you kill someone by shooting them in the head, it automatically causes that weapon damage explosion. But in PvP, if you shoot somebody in the head and that causes them to go down, it does not cause the 5 meter explosion until you kill them while they're down. I don't really necessarily like that because the headhunter talent procs when you shoot somebody in the head, right? And they go down in PvP, it procs. I don't know why the same concept doesn't apply to this pistol. I hope they change it, but if not, there are ways you can use this to your advantage. Like one time I shot somebody in the head while they were trying to snipe me, he went down, his buddy was right there next to him on the right side. I killed the guy, it caused the explosion and the guy next to him went down. So you can use this in your favor if there's like a group camping or something and they're all together or let's say a group runs up to you and you kill somebody, put them down with this. If anybody kills them while they're down, it causes that five meter explosion and everybody around is going to feel that. I'm going to show you how devastating this is later on in the build when I'll show you a specific piece and why this 400% weapon damage can be even more than that. And here's the build. The mask I'm using is Punch Drunk. I haven't used this mask yet. Maybe because I was saving it for a special build and it's the one. Now the only reason I have this roll to armor is because I wanted it to be viable in PvP. I can't make myself go into PvP with 700k armor. Because there are other people in there with 700k armor. If you have the right amount of crit, the right amount of damage, most likely you're going to win the fight. So if you want to be more tanky than this, that's fine. But the way that I'm going to describe how this build works is going to be very hard to put even two armor cores on here. This came with crit and that's what this build is comprised of. Crit chance and crit damage. The chest piece is an ongoing directive. Now this part is important, okay? The ongoing directive already comes with a utility mod slot. So the secret to this is that you have to roll the mod slot to an offensive, which means the ongoing directive piece, the chest piece and the backpack already have to come rolled with the crit 
either crit chance or crit damage then you just put whatever you need in the mod slot this is the way that you make this build hit harder than it would normally hit ongoing directive can be a skill set but i like it better as dps if i wanted to do a skill set then i just use a couple pieces for the status effect but look at this the three piece gives you 30 percent reload speed 30 percent you know how much that is <laughs> I don't know if you do 30% is a lot when it comes to reload speed. So you're going to reload instantly. And also the Regulus pistol gives you 10% reload speed as well. So that's 40% reload speed. Now, when you're dealing with pistols, especially revolvers, when they only have six bullets in them, you're going to want to reload fast because somebody else is going to be using an automatic weapon or something else that's going to overpower you as far as RPM. So this is what's going to make you more efficient when using the Regulus pistol and not to mention the Carnish LMG. So you're going to need that as well. The four piece of ongoing directive gives you rules of engagement. Killing a status affected enemy grants hollow point ammo for your active weapon. Hollow point ammo amplifies damage by 20% and applies bleed on hit. Now remember I'm running Sadis all across the board. So each gear set has a specific talent that you can use with your build to compensate for the fact that they don't have the ability to roll a chest piece. This skill is called Parabellum Rounds, and this increases the hollow point ammo weapon damage amplification to 35%. That's 35% amplified damage, which is multiplicative. Put this on top of the 25% weapon damage you get from the carnage, you got 60% right there. Don't sleep on this build. There is so much damage potential here, and it's been proven in PvP that it works, and I love it. All right, y'all. Once again, another piece that I've used for the first time. And just like the punch drunk, I was waiting for a special build. And this is the one, the Dodge City Gunslinger's Holster. Now this one went through a lot of changes too. Before, nobody really wanted to use it. It was kind of useless, but they made a use for this. Came with pretty good rolls and you're gonna need the weapon handling because the Regulus, I'll tell you what, it's hard to control. It's unstable. So basically when you have this gun holstered, it generates stacks up to 100%. When you swap to this weapon, your first shot, whether you hit them or not, it consumes the buff. So you better make sure you hit them, okay? This buff deals 10% damage per stack and it deals headshot damage anywhere you hit. These cats did not just interrupt my build description. Yeah, you saw it in action. <laughs> it's funny that I was talking about it, right? And that happened. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this, yo. So this holster applies headshot damage anywhere you hit. It doesn't give you the Regulus headshot five meter explosion. If you're dealing with one person, then you could just you know pull this out and hit them anywhere but if you want to be more accurate and there's a group and you want to do something strategic you hit them in the head just so you can get that regulus five meter explosion and i did tell you that there's a way that the 400 percent weapon damage from the regulus pistol will be more well that 400 percent is 400 percent of that shot so let's say this is sitting in the holster stacking up to 100%, you hit the enemy in the head, that explosion is gonna deal 400% weapon damage of that 100 stack of the holster. So the whole idea with this build is that you want to make sure that it's formidable enough for you to fight, which means you can use your CTAR, you can use your Carnage without having to rely on using the Regulus pistol because you don't want to have your Regulus pistol out. You want it to be holstered until you're ready to pull it out. Once you pull it out, that can be your saving grace sometimes. That can be your advantage in a fight. Let's say you're in mid fight and you're strafing back and forth, going left and right. You pull your pistol out and you hit them. It's stacked to either 50%, 75%, even 100%. So this is an all around DPS build that you wanna use in all areas, not just the pistol. It's not just the pistol build. That's what the hollow point ammo is for. So the backpack, I'm using an ongoing directive. And once again, you need to find an ongoing directive that already has crit rolled on it so you can roll off the mod slot and remember i said that ongoing directive went through a lot of changes they had a backpack talent that used to be on here called 
emergency requisition, which is no longer on here. Emergency requisition collected your hollow point ammo that dropped on the ground after you killed an enemy that was affected by a status. But now when you kill an enemy that has a status effect applied, it automatically puts those rounds in your magazine. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Now the talent on the backpack instead of emergency requisition is called trauma specialist. It increases the duration of your bleed status effects by 50% and all bleed damage done by 100%. You see why I call this bloodlust? Because everything in this build causes bleed. The headshot kill from the regulus pistol, the crossbow ammo, getting a kill on an enemy with a status effect. They're never not gonna have a status effect. So the gloves. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about it already having some stat because ongoing directive already comes as a weapon core. So all you need to do is roll crit on here. That's it. The knee pads, it's in the same boat. Just find some ongoing directive knee pads and roll crit. Simple as that. Now let's talk about the skills. Another way to keep the bleed on an enemy. Now when I said that this build is difficult to play, but once you get it down, you're all good. I meant it. So you have to work around your bleed in order to maximize the damage. So you want the enemy to be bleeding as much as possible. And the hive helps with that. Now because of the talents and just how ongoing directive works, it gives you a really good bleed duration and damage for what bleed is now because bleed was nerfed, but this is still really good. I mean, with the backpack talent that increases the bleed to 100%, this has 12 charges. And remember, it's a DPS build, so I don't have any tiers. I don't have any skill tiers. And the bleed duration is 11.6 seconds. So it gives you plenty of time to get kills on enemies that are applied with the bleed. You can drop this stinger hive as an area of denial when you're fighting to keep enemies under that status effect and to make them think twice about rushing. The second skill that I'm using is the explosive seeker mine, which is another source for you to keep them bleeding. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I see this thing rolling around the battlefield, I always want to get away from it. I mean, it's just something about this thing that's very annoying. And you can also use it if you're like flanking in PVP and you're trying to go down the alleyway. You throw this ahead of you and it's going to auto target anybody that's around that corner. So you'll know if somebody's there or not. That's what I do with this a lot. And it helps me out. It also has an 11.6 second bleed duration and the damage is pretty good. So this is one of those things that as a DPS build are good to use with this DPS build specifically because of the ongoing directive. Now I know I spent a lot of time on this build description and that was for a reason. I had to go through all the details and tell you exactly why it does what it does and how to use it. I know a lot of you are having problems with the raid and because of that I wanted to make a full beginner's guide for the Iron Horse raid. Click on this video right here to check it out. You will not be disappointed and also made a ravenous build which you do not want to miss dominating in PVP, PVE, whatever you want to check that out. Click on this video and that'll do it for this one. So if it helped you out in any way, and if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a like and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel until I see you in my next video. Be right out.